Hey, what's up everyone? Dragon back again with another edition of the Fantasy Commentary. Today we are watching The Black Cauldron. Now, when you see the Walt Disney Pictures logo forming on your screen, that is your cue to start listening to us. So we're going to kick things off in three, two, one. Hello! Hi! <laughs> Welcome to another edition of the Fantasy Commentary. <laughs> Today we are watching The Black Cauldron. The Black Cauldron. Arguably my favorite Disney movie, probably for the same reason none of you have heard of it. <laughs> Your because, favorite Disney movie? Because it's an oh, animated film. Because it's about as far from a Disney animated film What's as you can get. You don't like Disney animated. movies? I, I what don't kind dis of childhood did you I have? Didn't, uh, I had a Don Bluth childhood, thank you very much. But uh, which I'm pretty sure Don Bluth worked on this film, hence why I probably love this movie. But he was one of the lead animators for Disney and basically left, I think, Disney like in the late 70s or early 80s, and he went on to do other films on his own, like The Line Before Time, Secret of Nim. But yeah. Oh, this, shit. I like the name of the movie. But everyone was kind of saying, yeah, this one was very dark, kind of more macabre. So not what you would normally think of for a Disney film. So naturally, of course, I love it because it's everything that I love. Whereas, but this was considered. This was like kind of during what a lot of people considered the uh, the low point for Disney, where they were doing weird shit. Yeah, they were. You know, they were making films for a bit for cheaper, and the, a lot, what a lot of people think of Disney now is like what they call the Disney Renaissance, which started with the Little Mermaid, and you know you have Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, but kind of in the seventies. Oh, yeah, I guess you were like too old for those movies. Aladdin and I know. I mean, I was the right age group, but I had grown up with like. Aliens and stuff like that. So for me, Disney was like too the, childish. Again, I have nothing against it. It was just I don't know. I'm a bit of a dark soul. Not to sound too dumb, but you know, again, Don Bluth was a bit more my speed. He kind of had the little bit of, like the look and feel of Disney, but his stuff was like had a darker kind of quality to it. So it just it was kind of more my speed. Which this film definitely has more of a darker feel to it. Which stylistically, okay. for me, is more my speed. So I, I've got nothing against Disney movies. I don't. I don't dislike them. They're really pushed, you know, Western animation, you know, but just kind of an aesthetic and stylistic, you know, perspective. It's not. I'm pretty sure I've seen this movie, but honestly, I don't. <laughs> like every scene I see is like, oh yeah, you've probably seen this movie, but I can't remember any of it. Yeah. That's kind of the beauty of having a shitty memory. You get to experience things twice. Because <laughs> that guy in that little... What, what is that thing? A, uh, a fox or a cat? It's or a cat. A, it's a cat. Jesus. Oh, fuck. It's a I don't, cat. What, what are animals? Or, I don't is it a mammal? Outside. Is it a reptile? I don't know. That is definitely a giant it's squid. It's an insect. It's some kind of carbon-based life form, I think. I'm pretty sure it's got a respiratory system. But yeah, no, this is one of those ones. I is that Peter to... Pan? I was just going to say, he's like a knockoff Peter Pan. It Honestly, the people who I've met who have seen this movie or are familiar with this film are more or less people who are, they're not really Disney fans. They're more like kind of just, anim they're like more fantasy film fans. So they kind of more know about this one. Whereas a lot of people who watch Disney films, I've noticed they, a lot of people have not either, they've not seen this film or they don't even know know about it. So I remember I, I found out about this movie. Um, I was at a movie theater one time, and I went to the bathroom, and the bathroom had this uh, big poster that had like all these little mini posters of every Disney movie from like the beginning till up to that point. And I was just kind of following it, and I got to this movie, and I was like, "What the hell is this?" And I'd never heard of it or even seen it. Is that Look how thing? cute that pig is? Look at them eyelashes. I'd snuggle that pig, not in like a sexual way. Just oh like God! A, a cute way, you he know. Made it weird. He made it weird, man. That's what I do. So apparently, this film is based off on the first two books in the Chronicles of uh, Pirateen by Lloyd Alexander. Hmm. So, which again is why I think it probably has more of a darker fantasy feel to it because it's. Well, I mean, Disney, a lot of these movies are based off of, like, folklore, but it kind of feels like a bit more classic sword and sorcery kind of mm -hmm. story, which is probably why I like it. Look at that. Ooh, that is a... <laughs> the goat is not having it. Jeez, what an asshole. 
Here we have Joffrey. Well, there goes your butt. <laughs> you deserve that, to be fair. Roll credits. <laughs> I think this pig is in love with him, and I'm creeped out by it. That's a cute pig, right? It's an adorable pig. Yeah, no, I know one of the issues Don Bluth had with Disney was that they were, oh, I forgot what it was called, but the method they were using for animation was like a cheaper uh, like method. It was almost like a photocopied kind of thing, how they would like do the cell shots. and Because again, if you look at like stylistically, it looks a lot like Don Bluth's style, but like the quality of the animation isn't it still as. It looks very Disney esque. Oh no! It, well, Don Bluth was a lead well, animator, yeah. so again, he kind of brought his style was essentially the way he drew like the human characters was more that style, but then like kind of the way he did his backgrounds had that kind of dark watercolor, macabre look to it. I know he wanted to do certain projects that he did on his own, but he wanted to do with Disney, and Disney would said no because they would say it's too dark. But stuff like this is probably like the darkest Disney got in terms of like their stories. All I'm thinking of is I want to adopt that pig and care for it. And then make some bacon. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. I thought you were about to say make babies and that was going to be even weirder. <laughs> well, uh, no, but... It's just a bad <laughs> turn no matter how you look at it. <laughs> like, I was thinking of it as food. You're thinking of something completely different. <laughs> That's a cute pig, right? That's all I'm going to say. It's adorable. Well, if it's one thing, D Disney has always been good at is making adorable-looking animals. She's got. She's a power pig. Wait, what kind of powers does that pig have? <laughs> Makes her extra special. Is he a wizard? Is he doing some black magic right now? <laughs> Apparently this is also the first film, Disney animated film, to receive a PG rating. Oh, really? Yeah. Which she's, is... A, is she a psychic pig? Which is kind of cool when you think about it, because, yeah, Disney stuff has always been super, you know, kid-friendly. So the fact that this was like, you know, the fact that you needed some parental guidance for a Disney movie was kind of significant, which is, again, probably why I like this movie for a Disney movie, because... It didn't really feel like a Disney movie. I mean, it, it has some of the hallmarks for sure. It's not like completely removed, but for someone who likes darker, more adult-oriented stories, you know, or just cute pigs, or, or just cute damn pigs, this movie's got it all. Dark stories, cute pigs. This summer, check out the one movie that's got them both: The Dark Cauldron and everything you've ever asked for. Cute pigs. Cute pigs. Like, see, stuff like this, this is really cool, but I'm kind of like, not what you would think for a Disney flick. Prophecy Pig. Double special. <laughs> but why? <laughs> I like that. Well, then you're fucking stupid. <laughs> he's called the Horned King. I don't think he got that name because he's a nice guy. <laughs> yeah, all right. But again, this is again. This I love how this has a lot of the classic fantasy tropes where it's a young person. He's got to go on an either he's going on an adventure by choice or he has to leave. There's a reason for him to kind of take to the road. And they always kind of start off with like a very kind of humble life. You know? And a lot of these stories start off with an old guy. You can't do it. <laughs> yeah, like, they, it, it feels like there's like a passing of the torch. Yeah, like it's something that they know they need to do, <clears throat> but they know they have to hand it off to the younger person. Yeah. Oh, this is cool. I like that. I love all this kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, that's a, that looks fucking sick. I want that to be my summer home. <laughs> 
one day. Oh, but yeah, let's throw up a few cobwebs, you know, some some random skeletons scattered throughout, you know, just a really cool... Uh, hi, I would like to order a house on top of a mountaintop. Could you put a bunch of random jagged towers coming out of it, please? <laughs> <clears throat> See, I'm feeling this guy already. Yeah, that's my dad. I like this epic music for this kind of just slow, ponderous walk down this... See, when I walk down the stairs, this is the kind of music I want playing. That'd be so funny. You have that stuff like ready on your phone. Every time you like, I guess, walk down stairs, <laughs> just cue you just the song. It. Like, look at this guy. Or anytime you walk into a room, you just play that, you know, threatening trumpets. Yeah, freaking Skeletor here, man. But again, look at this. This is not what you would think of a Disney movie. Look, look at these freaking bodies everywhere. Like, Jesus. This is awesome. This Some is a, them look happy. This is metal as shit. That's why I'm always like... Again, like, how did I not hear about this film? But again, I get the sense that Disney kind of... Not buried it, but they really did not go out of their way to kind of... Either promote or kind of preserve the legacy of this movie. Because if you're like a hardcore Disney fan, I can see why maybe... This one might not be your bag. Again, if you look at something like The Lion King and you think that is the greatest animated film of all time, which a lot of people do, and that's fine, it's your opinion, I can see why maybe this might not be <laughs> up your alley. Is there people who really think like, like, like The Lion King? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, best. that's considered one of the greatest Disney films of all time and one of the greatest, I think, animated films of all time. And it's it's a good movie. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not knocking it, but again, I like... Again, I'm just... I don't know. I'm basically like a pseudo goth, so I guess. Because I, 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 I'm, just, I'm just drawn to like dark imagery and visuals. I'm not. I don't know why. Even as a kid, I've always liked more things that just look darker. So I've always been that way. So for me, something like this is more aesthetically appealing than something like The Little Mermaid or The Lion King. Because to me, those movies, while from an animation perspective, are very impressive. They're very bright and very colorful and very kind of jovial. Sing songy. Yeah, I mean, I, I think probably out of all of them, I would like Beauty and the Beast the most, just because it's got a lot of darker imagery. You know, I like when, Beauty when they're and the Beast more than Lion King. I do too, because but again, it's like a dark fairy tale and a castle, and everything's withered and dying, and it's like so naturally. I think that's cool as shit. You know what I mean, and at the end where he gets turned back into a human, everything lights up, and I'm like, all right, well, I gotta just cut the movie. That was one before. of my favorite scenes when they all like turned into humans. And I hated that because like, oh, now everything's bright and happy and pastel color. No, I'm not, I'm good. Can we put that little, curse? Ba- little candle, bro. I yeah. love seeing him turned into a Frenchman. I was like, can we? Can, I was like, can we put this curse back on? Because shit was way more metal back when that was that one. I mean, he already had so much happier. He already had Bell. He didn't need to turn back into a human. Oh, are they? This dog. What? Is that a dog? Yeah, it's a dog. I can't tell what any of these animals are. I thought that was some kind of, like, muskrat. <laughs> some kind of muskrat. He's scary. That's a f- fantasy muskrat. And he sounds like that. And I forgot he sounded like that. Yeah, who... Th- I hate it. That voice is, is killing me right now. Who is that? Who have I heard that sounds exactly like that? To beat that dog. That's not a dog. That's an Ewok. Magic. <laughs> that shit eating grin. <laughs> Googie. I mean, that is a dog, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a dog. He's just a weird dog. Oh. Da 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 da. <laughs> Who sound? Whose voice is that? It sounds kind of like Gollum. Yeah. Well, yeah. Who did the voice? Let me look it up. Because I was thinking the same thing. Like, what? What's the dog's name? Googie. Googie. 
or gurgi ish maybe I don't know. googie or gurgi uh john biner he played gurgi and dolly I love like the backgrounds, and I love like, a lot of times when you see fantasy movies like this. It's always like you can tell it's always like some kind of time in the fall. Like fall has that cool kind of darker look because everything's not completely dead like the winter would be, but it's not like bright and everything's growing. I love like, this guy's voice. I know, He's really I know. Making that's this dog come to life. <laughs> Where is it, my precious? There's Is that the pig's name, Henwin? Yeah. Uh-oh. <coughs> you fucking protect that pig. <laughs> that sound that those, like, wyverns are making right now, that, that sound was... So overused, like in the eighties and nineties. That was the, that was the, the noise of Sharp Tooth from the Land Before Time. Yeah, see, right here, this was like Don Blue style. Yeah, this definitely looks like Don Bluth right here. I don't know if it's if he was still doing it by this point. I'm really I, disappointed in that kid. No, Don, actually, no, Don Bluth was gone by this point. But you could definitely see like the influence of his style. How could you let a pig that cute get taken? Yeah, no, I just love the look of the... the again, this is when, like, what American animation... I when, I when it kind of looked like this, I missed this. But they don't do it like this anymore or like I mean I mean obviously now you would animate everything digitally but still like the, just the aesthetic you don't, you don't think of the uh, the Lord of the Rings animation oh god yeah <laughs> oh that was some that was some rough animation yeah apparently this is this film is using also like digital effects too yeah like the clouds in the background yeah actually I'm okay with ditching the pig and taking the dog really <laughs> I kind of love that dog I love the dog I mean that'd be a nice that'd be a nice summer home right there, right? A castle? No. You don't think so? You know how long it would take to like get from the top to outside? Yeah, but if you, it's a uh, castle, I don't think they have elevators. But I'm just saying it's like But when you bring people over, like, you know, that's the thing, no one would mess with you if, if you're if you're the person who lives in that place. I mean I think a castle like that has like modern day plumbing. Well, that's the thing. You don't. I mean, you don't want the interior medieval. You just want the aesthetic. But there's like you know, Wi-Fi and you know, <laughs> but yeah, plumbing and some walls. It's fun. Oh yeah, see, it's it's weird how they do some of the digital effects here like this. Yeah, it doesn't look terrible though. Weirdly I enough, like it. Yeah, it's not great, but. Are you sure you want that summer home? Look at it. It's crumbling apart. <laughs> well, again, that's all part of the luck, man. It's not actually... You have a bunch of, like, uh, purposely placed loose stones just for that kind of thing. For that old castle feel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. I like, got you. I got you. Underneath that, you've got a nice, sturdy structure. It's just you got to put some, like, you know, shit on the outside. I mean, you can't have a castle without some secret entrances or now, snoring guards. Exactly. <clears throat> I mean, that's just an actor working for scale right there. Like, yeah. Maybe guard dogs that look like they're way too skinny. Yeah. <laughs> Party time. Time to blend in with the locals. No, I mean, this looks kind of... <laughs> oh, jeez, that poor little guy. 
Are these like goblins and bugbears and shit? Okay, those are all humans. Yeah, look at all this stuff. You're not seeing this in a normal Disney. <laughs> Get a few of those. I don't know. Some Disney movies have some pretty lewd things hidden in them. Oh, I know. Hidden in them, but this movie, this not hiding anything. <laughs> Seriously, this poor little guy. <laughs> I mean, this is how I want to make my entrance. <laughs> is this the Horn King, like, portaling in from another part of the tower? <laughs> he does this every time he comes in and out of the room. He, he was just there. He just went to the bathroom real quick. But every time he comes back, he's got to do this that whole thing. That would be thing. hilarious if everyone's face, like, nothing happened. Yeah, like, it's like, uh, bro. Every- like, you don't have to come in this dramatic. Like, every you time. The smoke cloud. You... You're, you were just gone for like 30 seconds, dude. Yeah, like, like, we get it. You practice magic. Is it the pig? It's the pig. Oh. That's a giant cookie. Oh. The facial expressions in this movie are amazing. Yeah, well, again, it's, I mean, pardon the, per, the, the term, but they're very animated. Again, and to me, it's, again, the perks of animation is like when you can really, you can do like a level of expressiveness. You can that, do things over the top and they not seem like yeah. over the top. Whereas, yeah, if you, if you did the equivalent of this live action, it'd be like, Jesus, what it's the hell? It's like cheesy. <laughs> but in animation, you yeah, you've got a lot more like a leeway, room to move. and exp- Again, it's a different medium, so you can have fun with it. Jesus Christ. Swine wine. Those things are horrible. Not my henwin. See, he really is Peter Pan. He flew. Is that what he did? Sure. Apparently, I, I, Wait, I've been flying Peter, my whole life. What did Peter Pan have to do to fly? Like, he had to believe? He had to believe. Do we have to think happy <laughs> thoughts and have, like, pixie, pixie fairy dust, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Me too, but me too, buddy. His face. <laughs> Time for some bacon. <laughs> you see, they're already like, queuing up the grill. Whoa! Whoa! Just because he promised didn't mean the big promise. Come on, guys! Wait, wait! No, please! Wait, no, please! Thank you. I don't think I could live if that pig died. That animated pig died. Did that one guy figure it out that this was an oracular pig? We got lucky. <laughs> She's so oracular. Just feed it some wine, and all of a sudden, it can tell the future. <laughs> <clears throat> Not what you want to see approaching out of the shadows behind you. Yeah, you can definitely see why this was like a PG movie as opposed to G compared to other.
I like how he the he just keeps getting thrown around. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Random crash zoom on, like, wall! Because he, it was like, this is the end. Stonework! Go, you fat pig. Literally. Jesus, that was a fart. I know. <laughs> like, whoa. Uh-oh. It's alright, the pig's gone. I don't really care about the bullet. <laughs> I know, right? The boy isn't magical. Just the pig. <laughs> then she want an adventure. All things considered, I think being thrown in the dungeon is not the worst thing. Yeah. Definitely not the worst thing. As long thing. as you're not stuck there forever. I'm like, Duke, now, do they feed you when you're down there? Is, is it like being in jail, or are they going to literally just let you just rot to death in there? I just feel like they're going to eat him. Oh. Take that! <laughs> oh, no, buddy, Pathetic. you can't. Just love that subtitle continues crying. I know. Oh, hi there. Yeah, I'm your normal girl who likes to just pop up in dungeons. Because normal good people are in dungeons. <laughs> I know. I'm a, I'm a lord warrior. <laughs> I'm the warrior lord. <laughs> I like how she's not the damsel in the stress. I like how she's just like she's, she's like, like, like leading him along. Yeah, she's like, oh well, I guess if you want to hang around, <clears throat> come on. I was really hoping for someone who could, you know, do something. I know, right? I'm trying to build an adventuring party, you know. You know, I've already found the way out. Jesus Christ, just <laughs> condescending much. She's a magic user. Mm -hmm. She's got the dancing light spell. I know. So one of the things I always liked about this movie too is I felt like how kind of quaint it is. Just like, you know, they have kind of the look of like your fantasy character trope. You know, the young squire type boy, the princess. But I like how they're just a couple of just kind of ragtag kids. Yeah, they're not anything to find. This is very much a coming of age story. Yeah. That's a cool aesthetic. Again, I love the way this all looks. The look, the feel of this. It's like Conan. This movie's going to end with him killing uh, animated James Earl Jones. Snake Girl, Snake Girl Jones. Snake Girl Jones. Snake Girl Jones and the Temple of Sex.
That's why it was one big rock. <laughs> He's hauling rocks around. It's a fancy looking sword. <clears throat> Again, I really like how expressive they all are. Like, again, I, I like kind of like they they don't feel like two dimensional characters. They really do feel like they're alive. And they have personality. Yeah, they're like over expressive on everything. But again, with animation, I feel like you can do that. There's room for and that. I think you yeah. to, to to capture like a normal level what was of that expression. <laughs> Maud. <clears throat> is he like the bard? He is, yeah. Didn't it, it say in his uh, little subtitle thing? And he's got oh. a harp. So I feel like the harp is kind of like the electric guitar of the fantasy world. like The loot? Or the loot. Yeah, it's like a little... So like the harp is for like classical people and the loot is like the, the guitar. Yeah, the loot. <laughs> <laughs> That's the song of my people. <laughs> <laughs> God. Jesus. Don't drink the water. Like for any of you who get that, they go, like, what the fuck are they singing Dave Matthews for? <laughs> Wait, you couldn't cut him free? I know, they kind of let them hang it. Like literally. A sword. Oh. oh. Wait, I spoke too soon. See, this would be like the path going to the bathroom at night for me. Right. And I would want like a few like guys like strategically positioned that I have to do battle with on the way there. Yeah, like that guy right there. Again. Like just, a secret obstacle course too. Yeah. Just a paid actor. He does he you know, he does theater. He works at like medieval times He's normally. Like a, like a nice lightsaber battle. Yeah. But I just hire him to just stand there in costume all night while I slay in case I have to get up and go to the bathroom and if I do, he like attacks me. And I have who's, to, like, battle who's my the way. stand-up comedian who has that bit about, like, he, he'd hire Vin Diesel to, like, do some, like, and, like, have a bunch of, like, secret, like, obstacle courses to make it to his bathroom and he had to fight Vin Diesel? To is, there, is, is, there, whoa, is there a comedian who says that? I think Cause he it I, uh... Nick Swartzen or, like, Daniel Tosh's, like, one of his first stand-ups. I mean, great minds think alike, I guess. I don't know. But, I mean, that sounds good. Yeah, I'd hire Vin Diesel to fight me. I'd yeah. definitely do that. Maybe we don't do that with the sword. He lost her head off. Oh. I think he'd more likely chop his own arm off. He's way too happy. He's got a big ass sword, man. Got, got steel. <laughs> it's magical steel, Jesus. That's a plus one longsword. Uh, that looked like a plus three. Sure, it's a plus three. Monster. He blocked that guy's attack and it broke his sword. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that guy was just really weak. Broke his sword! Oh no! What a waste! <laughs> I had one ass. I know, that's perfectly good wine. He just laughs. But isn't it in like medieval times wine is just like safe water to drink? Yeah. It's safe water. <laughs> non bacterial water. I want to have just like a. a, a <laughs> Should we boil the wine or make some wine? I <laughs> mean, boil the water. <laughs> I'm done. I just want to have like a brand of wine called safe water. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking about that. 
Like I'll have a glass of safe water. And behind your bar, and it just, it's labeled safe water. <laughs> Big boy. Man, these are like stormtroopers. They suck at hitting shit. It's like, at this point, there's not much left to hit that's not her. I know, right? God, can you imagine having like a plus three longsword? <laughs> like a live action D&D? That thing probably cuts through anything like butter. Yeah, I know. Mm. Dog's just trying to save him. Whew. Yeah, why did they leave him fucking tied up back there? <laughs> Again, I'm just really feeling this decor, man. It just—it really speaks to me. <laughs> One day you'll have a dungeon of your own. <sighs> I look forward to that day. Yes. Teach my kids to talk back to me. Yeah, you'll put them in the dungeons. Put you in the dungeon. It'd be amazing to be able to make that Show as a threat. You the dungeon. <laughs> and I have that be like a legitimate threat. That'd be so cool to have dungeons in your own home. Like, your neighbor messes with you, throw them in the dungeon. Throw them in the dungeon. <laughs> Get, sir, we're not allowed to do that in this day and age. And then I'll throw him in the dungeon. I mean, with a castle that big, you could probably, like, you know, put the whole town in the dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. What? Jesus Christ. Jesus. <laughs> Creeper. I like those backgrounds. Those are really nicely done. Mm-hmm. He's just attached to that sword now. Fluter flam. <laughs> He's so entitled already. I know. Oh. <laughs> what was that stammering? That was like, ah! It's just so funny because, you know, nowadays, I feel like films and television, they're very conscious to try to, to put girls kind of, to really kind of like break the stereotype of girls being, you know, like 
the weaker sex. Because I they mean, overdo it sometimes. I feel like. I mean, yeah, but it, it, it's one of those things where, like, you look at this character now, and, and even though he's apologetic here, the mere fact that he act felt that way at any point, like, I feel like now most people would find him irredeemable. Hmm. Whereas back then, the whole idea of like kind of you know girls being empowered and strong was still gaining ground. So when filmmakers wanted to kind of kind of uh, show that girls could do the same thing as guys, it, they always kind of had to do it in a from a perspective of like, well, the guy character naturally assumes that because she's a girl, she can't, and then through the course of the story, learns that she can. Whereas nowadays, it's just implied from the beginning. So it's just like interesting. They can do anything. Yeah, they could... but but for us, even though he's doing something we don't agree with or, or saying something, because he learns that he's wrong, that for us, that that's how he becomes a a redeemed or like character. Yeah. yeah. Whereas nowadays, his story arc is, you know, he he you couldn't get away with having him think that way at all. Now I feel so. It's just interesting to see how much. Things like that you don't really think of movies have changed that much from, you know, like in 1985. Or, like, okay, it's not that big of a deal. But when I hear sometimes complaints from, like, younger people talk about older films with some of the stuff they have issues with, I'm like, what, really? And I'm like, I would have never have thought of that. But for them, they come from a, such a different sensibility that we're just so conditioned to this. Whereas they grew up completely different, so they, they, they this kind of stuff jumps out of them. Bruce. That's a cute dog. I'd give him a chance. Is no one going to, like, comment on why this dog is walking around like a little... And talking? It's Dude. normal. That's what dogs do, you know? Dogs have evolved. It's just, the most thing that's bothering me is what his voice is from. See, they did it before the Lion King. <laughs> Jesus? <laughs> Gross. <sighs> Another example of how my childhood made me prepare for whirlpools all my life but never never came into play <laughs> quicksand whirlpools booby traps back when they actually used kids to voice over kids <laughs> that girl's voice is there but uh uh we all can't be in trouble. I should just talk like that for a whole day. Just completely stone-faced, pretending like it's from your voice. <laughs> Of the little glow effect they give him. Mm-hmm. They all pull like spears, like oh, <laughs> and just kill them. Just start stabbing them ruthlessly, like oh shit. And then we have new main characters. <laughs> <laughs> That's when we got that PG rating. <laughs> Is 
Santa? Is it Santa and his elves? I mean, that's Santa, right? I mean, he kind of has that look to him. God, everyone knows this pig by name. was adorable. Yeah, it made the guy. No. Oh. Again, I love stuff like this. It's so ooey gooey fantasy. It's like See, this is a little more like the Disney moment right here. A little bit of enchantment. Little, little fairies, yeah, flying, flying everywhere. Is it Tinkerbell? Why can't magic exist in our world? Why does our world suck? I know. Why does our world just suck? It's just the suck. I like how the villain in this, too, he's, he's more or less just like a big bully, basically. Like, you kind of feel like this is more or less just less like a special thing and more just like this is like the world yeah I'd be curious to read the books I know the books apparently there's a lot of them and they're very involved so this film just kind of scratches the surface basically just skims what it can though. yeah That dude's still gonna be evil if you kill the cauldron. There's something about that guy that just, you know. Yeah. I think he'll find another way. <laughs> Dude, I don't wanna be a fucking pixie. Just kind of come and go, disappear, appear. Yeah. Make people fly on believing in magic. <laughs> they get him way up to the top and they just Bye. kill the spell and drop him. <laughs> They're actually like heavy metal fairies. <laughs> they lull you into that sense, and all of a sudden, they just like cue the slayer, and it's just yeah. like. And they just start like eating the corpses on the ground. And... <laughs> well, it's like in, in like mythology, like fairies and <coughs> fair folk are kind of cruel and really mischievous. Yeah, usually. I think in stuff like this, they, they make it more like playful, mischievous, when in actuality, they were like pretty murderous. Yeah, they're like sirens. Yeah. Ooh. Wah, wah. The names in this, in this movie are weird. Flu, fluid, dar. Fluid. I'm pretty sure uh, the old guy and the dog are the same voice actor. Man, look at that house. This would be like my like our condo that we we spent some time at. <laughs> Your little hobbit hole. Yeah. It just made it look like like he was pretending the door was blocked. (laughs) (laughs) 
Jesus. I lawn we. <laughs> Take your pick, I guess, right? Oh, it's got to be evil. But how would you test for an evil culture? Like, what, what, what would be the steps? Hit it with a hammer. <laughs> and if it's evil, what would happen? It won't break. I okay, yeah. See the data before Hocus Pocus. Oh. Oh. Damn, she likes it raw. That, for some reason, sounded worse. <laughs> I mean, she's not bad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what an evil witch. It's <laughs> a safe spot. Disney. It's funny, you know, like, it's, like, a lot of, like, uh, mythology. There was always, like, the three sisters. So it's always interesting. They, a lot of times they do witches like that, where there's those, they always come in threes. No, I didn't know that was a common thing. Dude, these witches could own him. I know. Oh, snap. Maybe not if you have a sentient sword. I mean, I kind of feel like this, he, the sword doesn't need him. Oh, true. Like, the sword could be our protagonist, really. Like, we should just follow the sword around. It just goes like on a John Wick style murdering spree. It just goes back to that castle, starts at the bottom level, and just hacks its way up. It's just a flying sword. Yeah, it just starts murdering <laughs> fools, like, just the entire movie. Honestly, I wouldn't be mad about that. No, I would not either. I, you know, I think that is the healthy alternative to this movie. You either do the movie this way, or you do it that way. Uh, now I'm trying to think of that movie we watched. Um, shit. We're like at the end. Is there like a sword that comes to life and like kills someone? Uh, it's like the guy who's like the computer is like teaching him how to do magic or oh, something. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the Demon OS movie. Yeah. Yeah, there was like a sword or something in like that, wasn't there? Yeah. I think at the end it like came to life and was like a, possessed by a demon or some shit. They went the snoo snoo. No. 
That is a big sword, though. Alright. He's a tiny boy, though. That's yeah, I feel like he'd be barely able to wield it. It's just, like, the magic that lets him do it or something. Well, it seems like the sword kind of, like, does have to work for him. Yeah. So I kind of get a sense it's like a symbiotic relationship where, like, yeah, he goes to swing and the sword kind of just follows through on its own. But, like, you gotta think, the sword probably knows it's hot shit, you know? Oh. You don't need no... Most definitely. It's a strong, independent sword. Don't need no sheath, you know? <laughs> God, I wish it was that easy to move. Yeah, that'd be nice. I've wanted to get a new apartment for, like, the last, like, three years. I've just been too lazy to, like, actually... Well, I mean, if you could, uh, if you could do that. Yeah, where's my Hogwarts letter? I'm a big stone man. Is this Godzilla? <laughs> it's like the end of uh, Planet of the Monster is the mountain rises up. Big to be continued. Kind of remind me of the, uh, those, like, death witches from Hercules. <laughs> the Norns. Yeah. That's what I was saying, like, I remember in that, the, the series Gargoyles, they call them the Weird Sisters. But it was that was they were always coming in threes, and sometimes they would be, like, little kids. Sometimes they'd be, like, old hags like this. Sometimes they'd be, like, three beautiful women, but they were, they were always there throughout history. Like, one had white hair, the other had blonde, and the other was a brunette. One had, like, black hair with white streaks in it. I mean, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my god, that was a nasty cackle. <clears throat> I love that whenever you make deals in these kinds of stories, like, it, it never works out. There's always a catch. It's never that clear cut whatever it is they're saying or offering there's always like a like it's not quite what it sounds like actually your first 13 firstborn children are mine yeah you said it <laughs> I wish I could do that just ninja dust and fly away I know me too that's me like the end of most days I've had it goodbye Now it's up to me to what? <laughs> he just pushes him down and runs. So they made this exchange for the Black Cauldron. Yeah, but he doesn't know what to do with it. Yeah, and now they lost their magic sword. So what you really did is get the Black Cauldron from these sisters for your enemies. Essentially. Hmm. Might have done fucked up. <laughs> Is that all? That's not very important.
I love the reverb on his voice. Mm-hmm. I wish everything in life worked like that, where you like you needed some like minions or people to help you, you know, like mow the lawn. You just stick a dead body in a cauldron. Mm-hmm. How you pay your taxes? You, you know, put a dead body in a cauldron. Yeah, I mean, dead bodies are expensive. Yeah, Pe- you know. This, yeah, this is just you filling out your uh, your W two right here, but this is what it looks like. Um, are you doing the same W twos I am? <laughs> I mean, how does it look for you? Not like that. Apparently, the director he actually used like real like they said like using real smoke effects. You can tell. Well, yeah, it. It looks good though. No, again, a lot of the uh, kind of X Factor animation things in here work really well. Make it pop. Isn't he their boss? Stealing your jobs. That's their boss, right? Yeah. I well, guess he's replacing all his live people with dead people. Well, think about it, too. An army of the dead, like, they're dead. Yeah, they're more loyal than, you know... They've got nothing to fear, so to speak. They're undead. The not dead people. Little fucking creeper. <clears throat> Alan Wee. Such a weird name. The music makes you think of Ghostbusters, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, this movie's awesome. I just love the look of all of this. It, it it's almost weird to think that it it is Disney because it feels like a Don Bluth movie. It mm-hmm. totally does. The look of it, like it's it's just so weird that yeah, this is Disney, man. But I, again, I can see why Disney did not preserve like the legacy of this movie because I get the sense that for them, this is one of those movies where they were just like, yeah. I mean, Disney has been moving steadily and steadily, just to, like more mainstreamy. Like. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Once upon a time, these animated films were like their bread and butter, and now they own. That's the thing. They own so many different properties and studios and production companies that it's like, you know, these. They don't have of, to try to go outside the box anymore because they're pretty set. Yeah, like I mean, look at any given month in a big movie release season, and probably about like seventy five percent of what's coming out is owned by Disney. <laughs> Wait, did he just get free and leave them there again? Yeah. Alan Wee. Arnold Wee. Watch me. There is blood in the water. <laughs> Don't drink the water. <laughs> Go. Oh, he's so endearing. Yeah, it's awful how endearing he is. Oh, ultimate guilt trip. Oh, no, 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 oh. no. Oh. oh, fuck. How much of a piece of shit do you feel? That like? hurts me right. In my I know, I know. Right in my left lung. <laughs> Wait, is, is he dead? Is Googie Googie dead? <laughs> I kind of feel like that's why he has him, just as like a stress... He's he just, really fall. Yeah, he just whenever he's having a bad day, he just grabs that little bastard and chokes him out. <laughs> he's white fang here. Go on! <laughs> get out of here! 
It'd be amazing if he like you see this big clawed fur hand come out of the cauldron. <laughs> he pulls himself out, and he's now this gigantic black magic mutated hellhound. Like a werewolf? Yeah, just big and gnarly spikes coming out from between the fur. I much prefer that to this little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I mean, if you go in the cauldron, you come out more of a badass. <clears throat> the big boy. One of the things I love about this guy's uh, look is that the, there's no question that he is the bad guy. I think he's a skull. He's like a skull face. Yeah, well, I feel like nowadays they Florence. they always try to subvert expectation. Yeah. But I like this guy's like, nope, he's evil, and it's clear as day. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's how they're playing it. You know, like he's really the hero. Ultra surprise. He's actually yeah, the hero. I think it will have you. What, that what face. Is, it? is that a face print? Am I, is he going to stick his face in there? Ooh. Jesus. It's actually kind of terrifying. Disney! Wait. Old Disney. <laughs> Wait. Good Disney. Wait, the main antagonist is dying right now? Mm-hmm. That just happened? But he died in, like, the most metal way ever. <laughs> I know this goblet's life has got to suck. It's just going down to hell. I love we. <laughs> Come on, old man. Don't close your eyes. You wish you had that giant, super magical log sword now. <laughs> All right. I would have just used the long sword to kill the three witches, and then use the long sword to fix the muscles. He ain't shit without a sword. <laughs> shit this movie only has like 10 minutes left about yeah no it's a concise story like shit just goes awry at the end. for the bad guys yeah really like it really sucks for the bad only, guys like, shit goes awry for the main character until it doesn't but Jesus. creeper gets two little dragons out of it i mean right i mean right i don't think you guys are using the boat right <laughs> you guys are boating wrong
I like how they're astral projecting themselves. <laughs> it's too much as the walk next door. I don't know, I was like daydreaming while you said astral projecting themselves and I was thinking of uh, like at work if you guys astral projected yourselves into our room to tell us something. Look at him, I love how he's just so sassy. God. Jesus. <laughs> He's stupid. Oh, yeah, stop <laughs> Again, it is a sweet sword. <laughs> yeah, I would love a sword that just... Looked like it became a Super Saiyan. Mm. And the movie just credits and it goes, and 500 years later they told the tale of Pig Boy, the Dragon Slayer. <laughs> he finds the origin story for like the most badass fucking warrior of all time. The unstoppable force of Pig, Pig Boy. <laughs> you see him sitting on a throne built on a just a mountain of dragon bones. <laughs> like, shit. <laughs> And he's got all the pigs in the world. Yeah, but like these big giant hogs are like tusks, like these big razor. They're bats. actually standing up and wearing armor. Yeah, yeah like just giant armored razor bats. <coughs> they call me the Pig Boy. <sighs> no, just you all made fun of me in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Cookie, cookie. Wait, is he dead? Mm. Uh, not him. They could just be real assholes and bring his body back, but not him back to life. But see, I kind of feel like that would be like the bargain they would make. Yeah. We want him back. Okay, well he's here. He is. You didn't say you want him alive. He's supposed to be like a dog thing, right? Or what is he? I, I he's think actually a kangaroo. <laughs> or he's like Einstein's furry <laughs> midget son. Kind of has Einstein hair and mustache going on, right? The dog's got a better mustache than me. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm so jealous of that dog stash. <laughs> it is a beautiful stash. It is a very beautiful stash. I would love to have a dog that had a stash like that. I would love to have a stash like that. Don't say that. <laughs> you're you're uh, yeah, yeah, holding yeah. me right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he just made them inappropriately touch each other with their mouths. With their mouths. With their mouths. See, I'm ready for this adventuring party, man. Let's go. Let's go have an adventure. Another adventure. You guys like? I like how they teleported somewhere else. Do you see that? <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? So what would the guy in the beach? green be? The main character? Yeah, in an adventuring party. You know what? I'm gonna want to say just a fighter. Yeah. Because he's like proficient with like. He's a basic. Is he fighter. proficient? Is he actually even proficient? Well, I mean, he's got to attune to the sword. Yeah, and that's it. And the sword does all the work. I don't know if you're proficient. <sighs> I could see him being a D4 peasant. <laughs> that's a cool shot. Yeah, I should definitely read the books because I would like to. Because again, I really like the story here, and I like. Yeah, I feel like it would expand a lot more. Well, yeah, what's actually going on? And I feel again, I feel this really skimmed. Probably like if you read the books, you're like, oh wow, okay, there's a lot more. The fact that this covered like two books. Mm. Yeah, it's a lot of material. Yeah. 
I mean, I don't know how long. I'm sure these... there's a lot of information crammed in those two books that aren't in this. Book. Oh yeah, I'm sure they kind of just. This is probably like a highlight reel, basically, probably of the books. Yeah. And I'm sure, being Disney, they um, they probably have to water some stuff down. I'm sure, but even for a Disney film, they. It, was, it felt like the villain kind of like, like abruptly look in the art better, came to is that wrong? End. Yeah. No. I'm, yes to what you said, <laughs> and no to what you said. <laughs> Except for Gurgi, he looks the same. <laughs> no, this is a fun one. I like this movie. Yeah, not the most amazing movie of all time, but again, I, I definitely think it's worth... Uh, worth the watch. Yeah, it's worth the watch. I think it's worth more attention than I think this movie ever really it's gets. It's great, like, visuals. John Hurt. John Hurt. That's why that voice sounded so goddamn familiar. Well, I mean, you couldn't tell Extremely through all that young fucking John Hurt, special Damn. effects. Yeah, but now now that I know that it's him, I, I can totally hear it. Can you? Like, honestly, there was just so much reverb and... But it, 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 again, had I not known before, I would have known. But if you told me, like, yeah, that's John Hurd doing the voice, I'm like, okay, yeah, I can definitely hear that's like the a, one in, thing in the you're pitch. really good when at you, is like picking out like the voice actors for people. When huh? you think John, you're really good at that. When you think John Hurd, what do you think of? Uh, like Alien. I think of Doctor Who. Is that wrong? I think of Merlin. <laughs> Different things for everyone. Yeah, that's. How I, I just picture it him with that little chest burster coming out of his chest. But yeah, so The Black Cauldron, definitely a movie that I think deserves way more attention than it gets. And by more attention, I mean any attention, really, because I... It's, it's not a long movie. It's, no. It's, it's good animation style. I think it's like, it's too dark, so Disney doesn't really ever do anything. That, well, that, yeah, that's what I think, too. Again, if you're a fan of, like, Don Bluth, like, you know... Uh, Secret of Name, Lamy for Time, and American Tale. I mean, those films look better, but stylistically, this definitely has that kind of feel to it. So, but yeah. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening, as always, and we will catch you on the next one. Peace. Peace. Bye.